Hi guys, it's Blythe Games, and today we're getting crazy with a little game called Shakes and Fidget. Now, this is a weird game that doesn't have a ton of gameplay. In fact, there's not a lot to do here. There's really not much of a goal, even. And I thought, well, this isn't going to be interesting for anyone to watch, and no one's going to enjoy it, and it's just going to be a waste of time and effort, and what's even the point? But then I remembered that I used to play a ton of D&D &D back in the day. And I mean a ton. And I can use this as a platform to share my D&D &D adventures. Because this is kind of, you know, D&D-esque, I guess. So, you know, I'm going to tell you guys a lot of fun stories about D&D. &D because there's a lot of wait time in this game. Now, you'll notice that my character looks like that and he kind of resembles the Joker. There's a reason behind that. When I first started playing D&D and subsequently almost every single time after, I made my character based on the Joker and that was because when I first started playing D&D I was told to base your character on a pre-existing property because that'll make things easier to come up with quest lines, come up with a kind of character that you have to embody. Like if I were to say Am I going to kill this young couple and steal all their money? Well, I wouldn't, but the Joker would. So I have always made a character. The very first character I play with every new party, with every new group, is always the Joker. He's a rogue, and then he prestiges as an assassin, and then he, pre he second prestiges later on as a Master of Masks, which is basically like Majora's Mask. You get to make masks, you put them on, and then you gain properties through that. I... That re I recall that wasn't a homebrew class, but there was something weird about that. It was in, like, a weird extension. Like, it was hard to find, but once I found it, it was a great second prestige class. So, yeah. Also, with d and I only played Edition 3.5. I haven't played any, played any edition before that or after that. 3.5 was my bread and butter, and I loved it. So, I'm going to use this game to tell you all those wonderful, wonderful stories about playing D&D. When I get to the first mission in this game, you'll understand what I mean when I say there's a lot of waiting. Are you familiar with this area? I'm looking for an adventurous local for some very specific quests. Are you in for it? Uh, sure. Hey! Psst! Yes, you! Shadow Rock Mountain is not safe anymore since a sinister creature showed up. The target is a winter knoll. Do what must be done! I'll be waiting for your return with milk and cookies! I think you can do it. I think I can too. So yeah, you just wait now, and then you do the mission, like, automatically. It's not great, but uh, I don't know. It's it's not bad. Like, I could see myself wasting a lot of time doing this. <laughs> it's free to play, by the way, if you want to wanna play it. It's called Shakes and Fidgets. Fidget. It says right there on the top. So you can see it. So the first story has to do with when I was DMing. I had been playing D&D for two years before I started DMing, and then it was my freshman year of college, and I, I decided I was going to get a D&D group with all my actor friends, and I was going to DM, but also have a character in it so that I could still kind of experience it with them. And then as the character, if my DM was weird, like if my DMing wasn't working, I could see that from the character's point of view. So, the very first time we were playing together, I used Legos to simulate our characters on the board and in the world we use legos pieces and my character who was a mean chaotic evil rogue based on the joker although at that point he might have been based on deadpool i don't remember looked very similar to our warlock so i always put a ton of points into prestige or I'm sorry, to disguise so that I, when I do bad things, I can disguise myself and get away. Or I can disguise myself and then do bad things. So I noticed pretty quickly that our characters looked similar. And occasionally I would grab his character, he would grab mine. So we started to, you know, work it into the narrative. Basically, I would go to a city. And before I did anything bad, I would disguise myself as him. Much to his chagrin. Like, he... he, he was like, oh, why are you doing this? So I would disguise myself as him, and then I would go do all the bad things, and then he would get in trouble for it. He got arrested once by the guards, and he had to prove his innocence, and it, it was hilarious. But basically, it got to the point where it was so prevalent that I would do this, that bartenders and guards and people would be like, Wait a minute! Don't I know you? Every time they saw him. 
So it became, you know, a running joke because he was the one who was really into D&D, like really into the story. So he would always be the first one to go to the bartender. You'd be like, hello, we're on a quest. What do you want to do? And he'd be like, oh, yeah, we're looking for the very rare. Wait a minute. Don't I know you? And so <laughs> we did it so much that it became a running joke in our real life. We'd be walking in the halls and it'd be like, wait a minute. Don't I know you? And, uh, I mean, he eventually got really sick of it, but I, it was it was a fun time for a while. Oh, it's the drunk. Hello. Uh, sir. Hello, drunk. How are you? Do you have time for a great quest? Travel to Merwin. Maybe there's something, anything, whatever. Just look around. Take notes. Get yourself moving. So that's the first D&D story that I have. I have a number of others, and... I think this next one, people who are a little more sporadic might enjoy. So we had someone in our party who wasn't always with us. He played when he had time or when he felt inclined. And we only played about once a week. So he only played with us, I think, about a total of two times before we actually killed his character for experience so we could level up. So he chose Cleric because we didn't have a healer and we needed a healer desperately. But his playing style was kind of doing whatever popped into his head. If he wanted to do it, he went and did it. So he was a level one or maybe two, and we were level fours, and we were at this holy temple, right? And he turns to me with, with a glint in his eye, with a glimmer, with a sheem, and he says, You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to run up to those temple doors, and I'm going to kick them open. Now, at this time... In my DMing career, I had just learned about traps, and I was going a little trap crazy. There was a lot of traps in our stories now. So when he said this, since he hadn't been playing with us, I was a little worried, because I knew what was behind that door, but I couldn't tell him. So I was like, okay, roll, and I was like, please do not roll good enough to break through that door, or even, like, please... He, sure enough, he rolled like a 19, which was more than enough with his strength modifier to break open the door. So this is what happens. On these sacred steps, there was about three or four leading up to the temple. Our cleric, Clarence was his name, runs up the steps full of energy and kicks open the door. And promptly, a large log, huge log, swings Hits him, rolls like a perfect 20, and like just takes him out. He falls down the steps, he's bleeding out, he needs to roll to save himself, he's not doing well, he's unconscious, and he's bleeding out. Now normally, when a trap happens, you, the rest of the party can like heal you or drag you to the nearest inn, but no, because this was a sacred temple and behind those doors were werewolves. Now, at the time, nobody had any silver weapons. Now, if you don't know, werewolves have a damage resistance of half unless you have a silver weapon. So, our cleric is in a pile of blood and armor just bleeding out in the corner. And we, who are just flabbergasted at this point about what has happened are just standing there as werewolves come barreling towards us to eat our face and kill us, you know. I mean, they, they might not eat our face, but they were going to try to kill us. Needless to say, we were not incredibly happy. So the rest of the, the fight is happening, and our cleric is bleeding out, and we are being just dominated just destroyed by these werewolves just taken to town by these werewolves one second let me do this quest and then i will um continue with the story you again Psst. okay here you go a new menace looms in evernight forest the target is a killer rabbit grab your weapon and do what you are best at at least you could try it so we're fighting these werewolves and we're not doing well. They got too close to us. Our warlock is pretty much neutered because at that point he'd learned fireball, but it does AoE damage and it would have killed us all. So he's like magic missiling and like like basic touch attacks. He's just trying to get through this. Our fighter, who, like I said, frequently people choose a pre-existing 
character to base their character on, and he chose Link. That led to a specific quest that I made for him to get a hook shot. It wasn't in the game, but it was your basic grappling hook, but it extended a little bit longer, and then it had like automatic you know, pull back. Like it, it, it had some special things about it. So he decided what he was going to do is he was going to use his shield to block the werewolf's attack and then hook shot our cleric and bring him here and heal him. Because I believe he had a wand of healing, but you have to hit, like, you have to touch someone with it. So, in his infinite wisdom, he's, he, he tells me that this is what he's going to do, and he rolls, and he rolls a one. So now, what happens? Because he gets punished two ways because of, because of this, uh, problem. One, the werewolf hits his shield and sends it flying. Not flying forever, not, like, destroyed, but for the rest of the encounter that shield was on the ground and two he hook shot it and it went through the clarence through clarence the cleric's leg and embedded itself in the stone underneath so he lost his hook shot and his shield and clarence who was passed out bleeding out and really could have used some help now has a hook shot through his knee that was the first time as a DM I felt the collective hatred of the group, and we stopped um, playing that encounter, or we, we stopped playing that night after that game. We, like, we played later on, but after that battle, we were just, we were all so spent, like, emotionally. Like, everyone kept rolling really poorly. Our fighter, the Link guy, he had this really weird habit of rolling really poorly. So it would take like a 15 or something to hit, and he would roll a 13, a 12, an 11, and never hit. So he's swinging and missing, swinging and missing, and just getting wrecked by these werewolves. I, however, as a rogue, was doing pretty good because I get like a plus 7 with my swords, and then um, I was flanking. But again, we're only doing half damage because no one had any silver at that point. Because why would you? And they rolled poorly on the gathering information on werewolves, so they didn't know about the silver. And in fact, we rolled so poorly on gathering information, we had no clue what we were fighting, period. So to our characters, what happened was our cleric stupidly ran up, got fucking plowed by a trap, and then these furry beasts came and fucked up our day. We ended up winning, barely, I think each of us only had like, two health left, if that, and, um, th that was, that was the first time I kind of felt the hate of the group, so, you know, <laughs> wouldn't be the last time, but it was the first. I have a little gold, you have a little time. Travel to the busted lands, there could be a meadow full of magic herbage, but it's probably only weeds, what do you think, might be worth a look, and now, let's dance. How just utterly random so this is working or i don't know so yeah i have a lot more stories there's one that someone made me laugh so hard i literally spewed coke all over myself there's a ton of stories and if you want to hear more stories about my DD &D adventures you're going to have to keep watching the shakes and fidgets because I'm only going to tell D&D stories while playing Shakes and Fidget, and that'll that'll be the enticement to get you to watch this kind of boring gameplay. All right, guys, um, this is a weird game, but I, I I like sharing my stories with you. Comment, subscribe, like, favorite. And tell me if you like hearing these stories, or if you want me to go back to games that are actually games. Um, yeah, we're gonna get crazy in the next one. Bye, guys.